The next item of business is a debate on motion 12561 in the name of Angela Constance on celebrating Scotland's volunteers. May I ask those who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons. And with the warning that we are already short of time, could I appeal for brevity? And I call on Angela Constance to speak to and move the motion for absolutely no more than 15 minutes, please, Cabinet Secretary. Thank you, President Officer. Life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? I have borrowed those words from Martin Luther King Jr. because they feel like an apt way to open this debate on volunteering uh, as part of Volunteers Week 2018. And I am delighted to have the opportunity to stand uh, in this chamber and put uh, on record my thanks uh, to all of those people who are giving their time and energy freely to befriend the lonely, care for the sick and the dying, help their elderly neighbours and fight for causes that they believe in. And to those and to all of Scotland's volunteers, uh, I say thank you. You are an inspiration. Poseidon officer, I'm pleased to be wearing the T-shirt that I was gifted from West Lothian Voluntary Sector Gateway. Uh, the T-shirt quite simply says, Volunteers Week, uh, a time to say thank you. And I genuinely believe it is this generosity of spirit, uh, this selfless uh, giving of oneself that will transform our communities and reflect the values that we hold to be true to others around the world who are fighting uh, everyday injustices. And the theme of this year's Volunteers Week is Volunteering for All, which provides us with the opportunity to highlight that volunteering is for everyone and to celebrate, of course, the diversity uh, of Scotland's volunteers. And earlier last week, I had uh, the uh, pleasure uh, to visit Cyrenians, visit the Cyrenians in Bathgate to, to learn more about how volunteers support the OPAL programme, that's Older People Active Lives programme, and also the Pathway to Recovery programme, which is helping people to uh, overcome addictions. And I met uh, volunteers of all ages, volunteers of all backgrounds who wanted to put their skills and their experiences of life to, to good use. Uh, some volunteers were rebuilding their lives after a bereavement. Uh, some volunteers were rebuilding their lives after a battle with addiction. But all of these volunteers uh, wanted to give something back. And all of these volunteers, volunteers from people in their 20s to uh, women in their 80s, all spoke of the importance of good support and training for volunteers because we should never forget that volunteers are often doing something that requires great knowledge, uh, great skill as well as great kindness. And we know that volunteering brings enormous benefits not only to beneficiaries but to communities and to volunteers themselves. And we know that among other things volunteering increases social and civil participation, empowers communities and reduces loneliness and isolation. And it can also improve mental and physical health, support the development of job and life skills, and foster a greater sense of belonging. And volunteering is key to us achieving our ambition of creating a fairer and more prosperous country with equality of opportunity for all, a country where everyone has the chance to participate and the chance to make a difference. Yes. Alex Cole Hamilton. I'm very grateful to the Cabinet Secretary for giving way, and I absolutely agree with everything she's said so far about volunteering. But does she agree that volunteering isn't inevitable, it's not a given, and that actually we have an, a duty in this place to foster an environment which makes volunteering more accessible? Angela Constance. Yes, I do, President Officer. I agree with that sentiment uh, very much. President Officer, to create a country that is uh, more fairer and equal, uh, that has to be at the very heart of everything that we do as, as a government and indeed as a parliament. Uh, and volunteering uh, is truly the, the golden thread that uh, runs through you know, all of our policies, from our draft strategy on social isolation and loneliness, to our Fairer Scotland for Disabled People, to our Fairer Scotland Action Plan. And we must remember that volunteers contribute on average uh, 136 and a half million hours of help every year. And we must remember that volunteering contributes £2 billion uh, to our economy uh, each and every year. 
There is, uh, fair to say, President Officer, that despite uh, our uh, collective achievements, it is fair to say that all of us uh, in this chamber, I'm sure, when it comes to volunteering, want to do more. And I want us to uh, create a society where volunteering is the norm, where opportunity or expectation is not limited by upbringing uh, or social circumstance. And that's why uh, volunteering is explicitly referenced in the programme for government and why we have committed to being bold in our vision for volunteering, uh, doing more to support everyone who wants to participate uh, and to have the chance to do so. And we want to recognise the full spectrum of social action from those who staff the helpline at the Samaritans every Sunday night uh, to those random acts of everyday kindness. And it is time to change the narrative in volunteering, to celebrate existing activity whilst finding new ways uh, to engage with anyone uh, who wants to participate. And it's also time to learn from our young people and build on the, the positive trends in youth volunteering as a government, we are committed to working with young people to better understand their aims and motivations for volunteering. And there is no better time to do that than during the year of young people. Before I go on to say a bit more about our ambitions for volunteering and the role of our young people will play uh, in shaping our approach, I would like to take this opportunity to uh, thank all the young people who have volunteered to play an active role to ensure the success of the year of young people. There are now over 500 ambassadors uh, based in every local authority who will champion the year uh, within their local communities. And I very much encourage members to find out what these young ambassadors uh, are doing within your own areas and to engage with them uh, around their activities if you're not already doing so. And it is, of course, presiding officer time to stop and to listen to how young people perceive the world and how they are perceived by others. A better future for current and subsequent generations is what the real legacy from the year of young people should be. And I am thrilled that our young people will play such a crucial role in shaping the future of volunteering in Scotland. In partnership with Project Scotland and Young Scot, young volunteers are being given the chance to lead work to engage young people and stakeholders from across Scotland in developing recommendations for the Scottish Government to help shape future strategic approaches to volunteering. And I'm really excited about this work and the opportunity it offers to young people to shape a new approach to volunteering the length and breadth of the country. And given the increase that we've seen in youth volunteering from 33% in 2009 to 52%, who better to lead this work than our talented young people? But this activity, presiding officer, will also support a wider programme of work with the sector to develop an outcomes-based framework for volunteering. And the framework will set out clearly and in one place a coherent and compelling narrative for volunteering and identify the key data and evidence that will inform, indicate and drive performance at a national and local level. And that work is already underway and over the course of 2018 we are working with our partners to take the conversation out to communities to understand more about what volunteering means to them. The outcomes framework will be developed in the context of the refreshed national performance framework, which has been recently scrutinised by this parliament and will be published shortly. And I am pleased to see so much in that framework that helps to reinforce the importance of this agenda, particularly with reference to the need for us to live in an environment characterised by kindness, dignity, compassion and respect. And I'm particularly heartened to see the references to kindness as this sits as a, a core value that's very much at the heart of why we volunteer and what we gain from the act of volunteering. We're also continuing to increase the diversity of third sectors volunteering pool through the Volunteering Support Fund uh, to include those who experience disadvantage or who traditionally experience barriers to volunteering. And this fund is having a significant impact on individuals, on organisations and communities. And I'm very excited to see what more will be achieved over uh, the next three years. And in the last year alone, the fund has supported 855 disadvantaged volunteers to participate. And I would like to take this opportunity to share an example of the difference this fund is making to, to people's lives. 
East Lothian Aid for Refugees has reported that their volunteer coordinator has visited foreign refugee camps on eight occasions, providing invaluable help and advice uh, to the groups there. And this is the same lady who had previously not left her house uh, for eight years because of her own problems. And I know that this is just one example, but there will be thousands more examples up and down the country. And I have no doubt that each and every member today participating in this debate will be able to share multiple examples of positive power of volunteering from their own constituencies. And as we debate volunteering today, I would ask colleagues to reflect on and share those stories and testimonies. I would ask that we use this time together to highlight and celebrate the contribution that volunteers are making to our country each and every day for no fanfare or no reward. And I'm sure that members will also reflect on the breadth of work that third sector organisations and community groups are delivering in their constituencies uh, also. And no doubt uh, we will all uh, ask ourselves collectively about what more we can do together to mobilise for greater participation. How can we collectively help to engage and take this conversation uh, out of this chamber, out of policy rooms uh, and into living rooms instead? And in thanking our unsung heroes and heroines uh, and celebrating the forces of good in our communities, let's also listen to those who have not been heard before. Uh, thank you very much, President Officer, and I'm very pleased to move the motion in my name. Uh, thank you, Cabinet Secretary, for, for your brevity. And I call Michelle Ballantyne for no more than 11 minutes, please. Thank you. Thank you, Presiding Officer. That might be useful. <laughs> Um, volunteers Week is a time to say thank you for the fantastic contribution that volunteers make. And this week, every day has a theme, and during the week, hundreds of events and celebrations will take place right across the UK, saying thank you to volunteers and recognising their invaluable and diverse contribution. This year, Volunteers Week, as the Minister said, is about volunteering for all, celebrating the huge range of people who give their time in so many ways. And I'm de delighted to be opening for the Scottish Conservatives today, as volunteering has always been at the heart of my life and continues to be. I grew up in a household where my mother volunteered, Meals on Wheels, hospital visiting, local opera groups and sports teas, to name but a few. And my own volunteering started when I was at primary school, helping in the Sunday school and participating in village cleanups. As I matured, so did my volunteering. It became skill-based. And my husband would say that I, I am not good at saying no when somebody approaches me to volunteer. But as Winston Churchill said, we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. And the Scottish Government defined volunteering as the giving of time and energy through a third party, which can bring measurable benefits to the volunteer, individual beneficiaries, groups and organisations, communities, environment and society at large. It is a choice undertaken of one's own free will, and it is not motivated primarily for financial gain or for a wage or salary. This, of course, creates a distinction between formal volunteering through a third party, where your efforts will probably feature on the data on volunteering and gives us a picture of the financial benefit that volunteering brings, and that informal volunteering, the grass cutting you do for your elderly neighbour or the lifts you provide to a friend who needs to get to hospital. That giving often goes, un goes unnoticed by everyone, but those involved, and is not recorded in data collections, but it is that very kindness that the Minister referred to. Today, this Tuesday of the Volunteers Week, puts the spotlight on young volunteers. And as such, I, I take great pleasure today in being able to note that youth volunteering has been steadily increasing, with youth participation now at around 52%. Initiatives such as John Muir, the Duke of Edinburgh's Award and Saltar Awards have given focus to young people's volunteering and allowed them to build the confidence, skills and readiness for work or further education. New friends have been made and lifelong memories created. But the challenge will be now how we maintain the level of engagement with volunteering as our young people become adults, because adult participation hovers at just 27%. Volunteer numbers in Scotland have not changed much in the last decade, whilst volunteer numbers in general have been in steady decline since 2010. So if it wasn't for our young people, we might be seeing a different figure. 
And the most common reason that people cite for why they stopped volunteering is a lack of time. As young people move into the workplace and they are likely to feel that they have less time to give up to give up to volunteering, or as family commitments take over and any spare time is spent with family. But for those who do continue to give up their time, we must be wholly, uh, wholeheartedly grateful. They not only contribute to the workings of society and communities, they enhance the lives of so many people within their communities, helping to bring people closer together and working towards creating a happier, healthier environment for us all. In the Scottish borders, 30% of adults volunteer formally, with even more contributing their time informally. And as was said earlier, the Scot latest Scottish Household Survey showed that in 2016, formal volunteers in Scotland contributed just under 137 million hours of help, worth two billion to the local economies, not something we can ignore. And although it is rather, perhaps a rather crude estimation of the value of volunteers, as there is far more to their worth than pound size, this is, however, based on the time and hours that have been contributed, multiplied by the average medium wage. So what does that mean in one small town? In my hometown of Selkirk, music in the town is provided by the silver band, the flute band, the pipe band, all of which teach the next generation of musicians. The common riding and agricultural show is organised and run by volunteers. The local war memorial and garden is built and maintained by volunteers. The cricket club, the football club, the rugby club, the swimming club, the bowling club, the riding club are all delivered and run by volunteers. The two new fantastic play parks were created through the dedication and fundraising by volunteers. Town centre buildings are being developed by the volunteers of the development company. Cubs, scouts, brownies, guides, army cadets are all delivered by volunteers. The kayak club, the archery club, the local opera show and many of the music and entertainment events in the town are organised and run by volunteers. And my personal shout out is for the beautiful estate of the Haining, which I'm proud to be the trustee of, even if it does give me a few sleepless nights. The, the estate was left for the benefit of the people of Selkirkshire and it's managed and run by a team of amazing volunteers who are engaged in renovating the estate and providing a wonderful place for local people to hold events, special days, and to just enjoy all year round. Whilst the Community Council, the Chamber of Trade, the casting organisations all provide a massive input of voluntary work into the town, without them we would have no Christmas lights, no farmer ma farmers markets, and no celebration events. And all of this before we get to parent-teacher councils and all of the individual volunteering that takes place. But perhaps the most important thing that any volunteer can bring to an organisation is their enthusiasm and experience, as well as the personal, social and community benefits. These, of course, are more difficult to measure than monetary value, but are arguably more important because they create the society in which we live. At present in Scotland, women and girls are more likely to volunteer than men and boys. And those from higher socioeconomic backgrounds are more likely to formally volunteer, whereas those from the lowest socioeconomic backgrounds are more likely to volunteer informally, helping out neighbours and community initiatives, rather than volunteering through established organisations. Arguably, those who are not engaged could sometimes have the most to gain from volunteering. There is con continued evidence of underrepresentation of disadvantaged groups in volunteering. And of course, volunteering brings a sense of belonging and well-being, as well as helping people engage with their local community, giving them a sense of purpose. A creation of community resilience can be generated by volunteering, as everyone comes together for the benefit of each other. Volunteering can improve youth engagement, address social exclusion, increase community engagement, and help towards a fair and equitable society. But in the 50 years I have been volunteering, I have seen a lot of changes, not least of all the level of paperwork and responsibility that has in some cases overtaken many of the pleasures of volunteering. There is a danger that as we professionalise volunteering, individuals will become more reluctant to take on the lead responsibilities and the onus will be pushed onto funding paid coordinators. When I was searching through, looking to, to how do we evidence how much volunteering gives us, one of the things I looked for was how does it improve your well-being, um, not only for, for individuals but also for their communities. 
And interestingly, the DWTP and Cabinet Office has worked to establish a, a benefit for, of well-being for volunteers and found that a 1.9% higher life satisfaction could be accrued for those who give up their time compared to non-volunteers. Now, I suppose that depends slightly on where your life satisfaction started, but I, I, I suppose in my own way would maybe challenge that because I've often felt that it's the volunteering in my life that has given me the most satisfaction and often made me the happiest. Um, those strange nights where you went out in the middle of night and planted up the town so that in the morning when the people came out to, to the festival, it looked different to that night when they went home. It was that quiet pleasure that we all went home with, chuckling to ourselves that we'd made a real difference and we were going to put smiles on people's faces in the morning. Volunteering for all is a theme that provides the prospect to engage people, people who wouldn't normally partake with volunteering opportunities. We must learn how they can be better supported, where new opportunities should be developed, and where to increase access to volunteering opportunities for the benefit of everyone living in Scotland. Because members, volunteers are not paid, not because they are worthless, but because they are priceless. And today is a day to say thank you to everyone who has delivered any volunteering, and to say to anybody that hasn't, join in, volunteer, it'll make a difference in your life. Thank you. I now call Monica Lennon for up to eight minutes, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. It's great to be taking part in this celebration of volunteering in Scotland, and I'm grateful to the Cabinet Secretary for bringing forward this important debate today. It is a wonderful opportunity for all of us to congratulate Volunteer Scotland on raising awareness about the crucial work of Scotland's army of volunteers during Volunteers Week and to share what volunteering means to us and the communities that we represent. We fully support the motion and on behalf of Scottish Labour, I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who contributes to Scotland's vibrant culture of volunteering. Because volunteering is an important part of life in Scotland today, with 1.2 million people in Scotland volunteering a staggering 136 million hours of their time every year. And as the Cabinet Secretary recognised, this contributes £2 billion to our economy. So it's an invaluable good for both volunteers and beneficiaries alike. The commitment I made to a local befriending organisation when I was a student is an experience that enriched my life and I'm still in touch with Covey in South Lanarkshire today. At that time I perhaps didn't realise the wider impact of volunteer work or the influence it would have on my own outlook and values. Volunteers add something special to our communities from having a cup of tea with young people who might be having a rough time or reinforcing the work of our emergency services. But the benefits don't flow in one direction. Being a volunteer can be really fulfilling it can help you feel part of something in addition to your own network of family and friends. And for those who experience loneliness or are feeling disconnected, volunteering can play a crucial role in alleviating feelings of social isolation or just to achieve a clearer sense of your own purpose. We know that loneliness has a significant impact on mental health and that particular groups have an increased risk of this, including disabled people and older people. Disabled people and older people are underrepresented in, in voluntary participation and this strikes me as a lot of missed opportunities. So whilst the theme of this week is volunteering for all, there is work to do to remove barriers to participation so that volunteering is experienced by people from all different backgrounds and that their skills and experiences enrich our community and challenge stereotypes and stigma. I was recently at two events where the special contribution of older people and disabled people to voluntary roles was clear. At an event organised by Disability Equality Scotland, I heard about the tireless work of access panels to improve, to improve social inclusion for disabled people. The contribution of access panels is crucial, particularly when policy makers are not always representative of service users. This is something that has become quite apparent to me during the scrutiny of the planning bill and why I believe there is a strong case for access panels having statutory rights in the planning process such as the right to be consulted on planning applications so that we can build truly inclusive places and at the latest Scottish Older People's Assembly it was clear that older people have the life experience and often the professional experience uh, to make them valuable volunteers. Intergenerational interaction is one of the many benefits of volunteering and the culture of kindness and respect it inspires. 
When I was a councillor in Whitehill in Hamilton, we had an annual intergenerational lunch that young people came along to and they cooked a meal and joined older people to have lunch together. And it was an event that everyone in the community looked forward to each year. And in the Year of the Young People, it is fantastic to see that youth volunteering participation has now grown to 52%. In my local area of South Lanarkshire, Voluntary Action South Lanarkshire founder of the volunteers they work with, 63% were under the age of 25. So it is crucial that volunteering opportunities are accessible for everyone, and particularly for underrepresented groups who often are the ones who could benefit the most. More must be done to meet the complex needs of different groups and I'm keen to hear more from the Scottish Government about the action it is taking to work with stakeholders to identify and eliminate barriers to volunteering. On Saturday the 23rd of June, so that's this month, um, I'm hosting a coffee morning as part of the great get together as part of a series of events in memory of the late Joe Cox MP and together with my, my colleague Jed Killen MP, we're hosting the coffee morning at the Gilmer in Whitehill Parish Church. And it's a Saturday, it'll be quite relaxed, and we're aiming to bring together people who wouldn't normally spend time together on a Saturday. So on that note, um, it's an invitation. It's open to, to everyone in the chamber and beyond. All you have to do is to register in advance so we get enough uh, teas and coffees and, and cakes in. But, I'm reminded about uh, today's debate about the words of, of Jo Cox as she was going round her constituency and Jo said we are far more united and have far more in common with each other than the things that divide us and I think that's the great spirit behind volunteering. Um, Vaslan in our area have confirmed that over 16,000 hours of volunteering um, have been contributed um, in, in our area and over 61% of that was in the field of health and social care, which I found really quite interesting. But volunteering is very diverse. Um, in uh, Hamilton, Bothwell Road Action Group, um, they bring people together um, to get outdoors and do some litter picking. And when the weather's good, um, you don't realise how much fun litter picking can be, but it is quite therapeutic. And I'd also like to congratulate Antonia Keith Ness from Hamilton. She was recently uh, crowned the Scottish Parent of the Year for her voluntary work supporting other parents. Speaking to the rewarding nature of volunteering, Antonia said after experiencing adversity in her own childhood that volunteering has helped to build her confidence. The beneficiaries of voluntary work are often the most vulnerable in our society. These services um, are often aimed, to prevent those, or aimed at those most in need and can help people from slipping through the net. And at a time when local um, government funding is, is squeezed, um, I do appeal to the Scottish Government to make sure that charities are not allowed to slip through the net. I was pleased to hear the Cabinet Secretary talk about the importance of recovery and just a couple of hundred yards from here, um, the Serenity Cafe, a community cafe set up and run by volunteers in alcohol and drug recovery was recently at risk of closure. In fact, they do have to move premises and there's some good news there, but they do have to now raise funds to kit out these new premises. So they do have a GoFundMe uh, page. I just checked before the debate and they've raised just under 2,000 pounds. They need 25,000 pounds. So if you're on Twitter, it's at Serenity Cafe, hashtag SOS Edinburgh. They do fantastic work. And again, it's all led and run by volunteers and they do need our support. And the other point I would want to make is that whilst, you know, the spirit of volunteering is, is something very special, we have to um, be careful that, that volunteers are not being brought in to, to take the role of, of, of skilled workers, people who, who used to provide jobs. So, for example, last week we heard in Scottish Borders that several school librarians are now being replaced by pupils and volunteers as a cost-saving measure. And that's not something... I hope that any of us would wish to see becoming um, rolled out practice. So again, I would appeal to the Scottish Government to ensure that, that volunteers in the voluntary sector don't bear the, the cost of that. In conclusion, volunteering drives forward the principles of equality and opportunity. It promotes intergenerational learning and understanding, and it helps to foster a culture of respect and kindness. I hope that the message of Volunteers Week is heard by people across Scotland and that the priceless gift of giving your time to help others is widely recognised. Presiding officer, I hope that volunteers themselves, who are so often humble about the work they do, take some time to recognise and celebrate their contribution to communities across Scotland. Thank you. I call Alison Johnson for up to six minutes, please.
Thank you, <clears throat> Presiding Officer. I wish to join others in commending everyone in Scotland who dedicates their time, their talent and their expertise to volunteering. Volunteers make an incredible contribution to an enormously wide range of activities. I think it's fair to say that there are so many people that we all wish to thank today, um, but I'd like to take this opportunity to highlight the great work volunteers do in terms of fundraising. One group alone, Capital Sci-Fi Con Team, have raised over £74,000 for the Children's Hospice Association Scotland and more than £180,000 over the last few years and the last three years, and the youngest member of that costume group is only eight years old. Clear indication of the impact our volunteers have. Um, now I'd like to turn in particular to the role of volunteering in supporting and promoting sport. There are at least 45,000 voluntary organisations in Scotland, and almost a third of these are sports clubs. And 16% of all those who volunteer give their time to sport in Scotland. And in this year of young people, it's worth noting that half of all young people who do volunteer do so in sport. And in our 2016 manifesto, the Scottish Greens were proud to highlight the crucial contribution that volunteers make to sport in Scotland. Across Scotland, there are more than 13,000 sport clubs and almost 200,000 people dedicated to volunteering in sport, bringing great benefits to society. Um, the support delivered to Scottish athletics, and I will... Um, bring members' attention to my register of interests, but the support delivered to Scottish Athletics in terms of volunteer hours amounts to £7.9 million, a remarkable contribution to athletics at all levels. Um, next Tuesday in this building, I am delighted to be co-sponsoring the Scottish Sports Association reception to celebrate volunteering in Scottish sport um, with my colleague Liz Smith, MSP. And we'll celebrate Scottish sports we will celebrate those almost 200,000 volunteers and you can meet volunteers throughout Scottish sport, so please do come along. Um, we wholeheartedly support expanding sports clubs in Scotland through support for volunteering. If you don't have the volunteers, you can't deliver the sports. We, we'd like to see making facilities more accessible, um, given priority, providing more funding to enable more women, people from minority ethnic communities and disabled people the ability to participate in all aspects of sport and volunteering. Michelle Ballantyne and Monica Lennon have highlighted the barriers that specific groups face in, in being able to volunteer as they might wish. A report from England by Women in Sport called Good Sports, Why Sports Need to Engage Female Volunteers showed that while women make up the majority of volunteers across all activities, they're still less likely to volunteer in sport than men. In fact, figures from 2015 indicate that men are twice as likely to volunteer in sport as women. And their research found that volunteers in sport are more likely to be white males from an affluent background. And there are, and I'm quoting, less visible volunteering roles for women in sport than in non-sport roles. And women who want to progress in sport feeling, again I quote, isolated, disconnected, and less valued as volunteers than men. Now that research relates to England, but I'd be interested. Um, I suspect there may be a similar picture here in Scotland too. And certainly when the Health and Sport Committee looked at barriers to volunteering in sport, we found that time and costs were real barriers to volunteering. We looked at many ways to make volunteering more accessible, and it's crucial that we provide good development opportunities for women in volunteering, because women volunteers are such an important role model to young women and girls. Given our reliance on volunteer coaches to deliver sport, I'd like to see more women coaching, and not only at levels one and two welcome though that is. If we want more women and young girls to stay involved, I think more women coaches is key. Um, and perhaps we should look at the success of Judy Murray's She Rallies initiative, which is all about empowering and enabling young women and girls to take part in tennis, but this is something that can be looked at more broadly. And Chest, Heart and Stroke Scotland told us that we have to do more to understand and build on the motivation for people to volunteer in the first place. Are they looking to gain new skills or even qualifications? We do have to find ways of making sure volunteers can grow and adapt their roles within organisations rather than expect them to carry out the same responsibility for a long time because this can be a real barrier to retaining volunteers who've got great experience. And we, we may all have experienced people, you know, we've met people who volunteered in sport when their children began to take up a sport or compete, stay as volunteers until their children leave the sport, um, 
and we lose real talent, people who've become invaluable to sports organisations. So I think with a bit more support we could do and more recognition, we could hang on to volunteers for longer. Um, if these people had more of a chance to represent these sports in their communities and events and in the media, then organisations could hold on to that expertise for longer. I think we should do all as we can as a society to encourage volunteering and employers obviously have a key role here. I think a basic income um, could help deliver more volunteers because clearly um, the financial costs of being a volunteer can be prohibitive for too many people. So not everyone has the same opportunities to get involved in volunteering. Many would love to, but they're simply restricted by long working hours, lack of assistance with core caring commitments and the hidden costs of volunteering in terms of travel and expenses. Um, I will close now, Presiding Officer. I look forward to the Cabinet Secretary responding to these points when closing. And again, I'd like to thank all who volunteer in Scotland. We can't thank you enough. Thank you. Alex Cole Hamilton for up to six minutes, please. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'm very proud to speak in this debate, not just as a Liberal Democrat, but as I do also from my position as convener of the Cross Party Group on volunteering. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the Secretariat, made up of John, Paul and Margaret, who really helped that group come alive. It's one of the most functional CPGs in the Parliament. It's been a delightful debate. Um, this has, we've heard a myriad of local examples and, and not just um, constituencies where work is, this is, like this is happening, but MSPs engaged at a very local level in the life of these organisations. And what binds these groups is this idea of social cohesion, the co social cohesion that they foster, that from a million seemingly tiny acts of public service, of philanthropy, and in t at times compassion, we can forge the backbone of our communities. And that's where these voluntary organizations come in. The cabinet secretary was quite right in her opening remarks to talk about the financial contribution of volunteering in Scotland. That two billion is a conservative estimate for the formal volunteering that takes place on any given day. That 1.2 million adults, that's 27% of the population, will freely admit that they're involved in some level of formal volunteering. But that is the tip of the iceberg. If you consider all the other quiet, selfless acts that take place every single day in every street uh, and town around this country, then the picture is far, far bigger. And we could not do without it. Without it, our societies and our communities would simply grind to a halt. And I said in my intervention to the Cabinet Secretary that volunteering isn't a given. It's not inevitable. We have uh, an obligation, a duty of care to volunteering, both in this place and in the halls of government, that we need to foster an environment which recognises that it actually can be quite fragile. Uh, we're very lucky in Scotland that we do have opportunities for volunteering from cradle to grave. And it's right then that the theme of this year's volunteering week should be uh, volunteering for all. We foster active citizenships in our schools. We, we get young people out from nursery age to volunteering in litter pickups and, and the like. And that goes through to colleges and universities as well. Now, I was 19 years a youth worker in Scotland. Um, and one of the things I think we should be concerned about is the decline in things like community learning and development. About 10 years ago, the CLD department at Strathclyde University closed and has not really re been replaced. And we're not churning out trained youth workers who can lead volunteer armies of youth workers as well. It's something we need to turn our attention to. In the workplace as well, we talk about corporate social responsibility, but at times of economic shock, it's one of the first things that companies can roll back on. And we need to move away from a model where uh, organizations or companies will get members of staff to go out and paint rooms in a, a local care home badly, when actually they could be using their own skill set to build uh, resilience and capacity within very hard to reach groups uh, and people. And finally, retirement. We talk about retirement a lot in this, uh, in this parliament as, as if it's some sort of bad thing. And yes, there is a strain attached to our increasing aging population, but I see that as a resource as well, because uh, we know that many retirees or people who are older in age will engage in volunteering and do so in a way that makes things into, makes our communities intergenerational, where they can impart their own skills and knowledge and forge relationships that they would never have otherwise uh, 
undertaken. We rely on volunteering in this country. It backfills many of our state obligations. We lean on it in the delivery of many of the services that we instruct and that we fund from this, this place. I, I'm an evangelist for volunteering because of that. It's scalable, incredibly scalable. You can be stuffing envelopes, you can be part of a mountain rescue team. It's utterly inclusive. We bend over backwards in the voluntary sector to make it accessible to people of all abilities um, and from all backgrounds. And it creates a goodwill that is far greater than the sum of its parts. I enjoyed very much coming into this job as well because I was struck by the, seeing the counterpoint of my own interest in volunteering in so many parliamentarians from across the chamber. It's, people often do politicians down and saying that we're just interested in self-interest, but from the examples I've heard of people engaging in volunteering, it's more in the public service that I see many of my friends and colleagues from other parties. It's about expanding the lives of the communities around them and we seek it out still. So I want to thank the government for this debate and indeed their continuing interest and support both in the CPG and volunteering uh, across this country in the golden thread which the cabinet secretary defined. It is an issue that we should strip out party politics from. Um, we talk a good game in this, in this hall, in this chamber, about community, and we possess probably more knowledge about our communities than any generation previous. We, we indeed have a forensic understanding of the social problems and the magnitude of growth and healing that we need to foster in our communities, and volunteering is absolutely key to that, because Bobby Kennedy, who died, who was killed 50 years ago on Sunday, said it is not enough just to understand and see clearly. The future will be shaped in the arena of human activity by those willing to commit their minds and bodies to that task. So to finish, presiding officer, I want to join those thanks today for the legions of people of all ages and abilities in every part of Scotland who are quietly putting their shoulders to the wheel in pursuit of the service of the cause of the betterment of this nation. Thank you. Uh, thank you to all the opening speakers. That's us back on track, but still quite tight for time. So it's speeches of up to five minutes. Uh, David Torrance, followed by Maurice Corey. Thank you, President Officer. I'd like to refer members to my register of interests and my long-standing long membership of the Scout Association and also of several management committees within my constituency. I welcome this debate today to celebrate Volunteer Week from the 1st to 7th of June and the opportunity to bring attention to the vital role that volunteers play across the whole of Scotland. The Scottish First Sector is currently made up of over 1 million volunteers and over 40,000 voluntary organisations. Our volunteers dedicate hundreds of hours a year to provide invaluable services through charities, community organisations and voluntary groups. They provide support to care and tackle a range of causes which ultimately impact on individuals and communities on a massive scale. They offer fresh and innovative approaches on a national and international level and also tailor their services to local issues. Their selfless work and dedication cannot go unrecognised, and it is an honour to bring the attention to the contribution of volunteers to our communities, economy, society and environment. It is a pleasure to be able to highlight some of the great volunteer work that goes on within my constituency, with impact stretching across the country. Since their establishment, Clear Buck Haven have made an immense contribution by planting vegetables, wildflowers, growing and selling produce and offering horticultural open days. They offer services to our local authorities, are often constrained in their capacity to tackle, such as litter clearing, recycling, landscaping and repairs, as well as organising activities for children. Kirkcaldy YMCA is another fantastic voluntary organisation. We provide a wide range of programmes for children, young people and families, and create opportunities for them that previously were not available. We work in partnership with other voluntary organisations, charities and international groups to maximise their impact in Kirkcaldy and the surrounding area. These are just two of the hundreds of voluntary groups in my consistency, and I would like to thank them all their invaluable and irreplaceable support that they give. There's an integral part of social fabric within my constituency. Without their invaluable efforts, my constituency would be a lot worse off. They bring our community closer together by creating trusted relationships and have opened their doors to community members of all ages. The economic impact our volunteers, volunteers make is often understated and difficult to measure. Volunteers often give up their paid working time to dedicate their time and efforts to volunteering. A survey by Volunteer Scotland estimated that volunteers in Scotland contribute £2 billion to Scotland's economy in 2016. However, there are less quantifiable benefits such as personal, social, community and environmental benefits in addition to their financial contribution. I'd like to read to the Chamber a poem posted by the Scout Association for Volunteers Week, highlighting the importance of volunteers. Here's to our volunteers, the extra milers, the dreamers and the doers, 
Here's to our programme planners and the make it up on the spotters, which I'm one of. Here's to our minibus drivers and trailer tours, and here's to give it a goers, and here's to our skill for lifers, and never give uppers. And here's to our here when you need us, and here's to our amazing leaders, and here's to our volunteers. Although the poem was to thank members of the Scout Association for its contributing, it applies to all of Scotland's 1.2 million volunteers. 11,946 volunteers contribute to the Scouts in Scotland, supporting a membership of 40,000 young people every week. The Scouts have enormous impact on our young people, whether as a medium for tackling social isolation, building relationships, developing skills, or having fun and adventures and making friends. Our Scout groups very much depend on volunteers to provide our services, and we cannot function without them. We have an incredibly mutual beneficial relationship as volunteers reduce operating costs for charities and organisations like the Scouts by offering us opportunities to develop life skills. Our volunteers also contribute to the quality of the services that Scouts provide by contributing with their specialised and tailored skills and talents, whilst our volunteers are celebrated for their contribution to the community and young people, and we must also recognise the contribution to charities or organisations that they serve. Volunteer for Scouts serves as a fantastic opportunity for adults to develop skills. According to a survey by the Scout Association, over 90% of Scout volunteers felt that skills, abilities and experiences they acquire through volunteering for Scouts have been relevant to their working life and personal life. In fact, two-thirds believe that they felt a direct correlation between their experiences volunteering with Scouts and gaining employment or de developing and advancing career opportunities. Our research has revealed that volunteers believe that they are most satisfied with life and have reported an improvement in self-esteem alongside reduced feelings of loneliness and stress. In conclusion, President Officer, I'd like to reiterate why we are celebrating our volunteers this week. Volunteers provide us with new and innovative insights in developing approaches to tackle problems of mental and physical health, education, social isolation and discrimination, to name just a few. They give back to the community and create intimate connections with local residents particularly with young people, by bringing people together and so celebrating diversity and inclusivity. I call Boris Corey to be followed by Claire Adamson. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'm glad to have the opportunity to speak in this debate today, which is paying tribute to the contribution of thousands of volunteers across the country who play such a big role in making our communities the great places that we live in. Volunteers are the lifeblood of the communities in Scotland, and they, they organise groups for children so they can learn new skills like the Scouts and Girl Guides. Volunteers run events like galas, fates, shows that bring together and bind our communities. They also run thousands of charities which exist in Scotland that do a great plethora of things to make Scotland a better country to live in. I note that the government's motion gives us the quantitative value of the impact which volunteers have in Scotland. The volunteers contribute around 130 million hours of help and two billion pounds to the economy, as I already said, is impressive and a statement to the te to a testament to the impact that, but I do not think the full impact the volunteers have on Scotland can be measured solely by figures such as the enormity of that impact. Just think of how much worse each of the places we represent would be so much worse off if there are no volunteers. Nevertheless, hopefully the 34th Volunteers Week will encourage more people to volunteer in Scotland. And I've read recently that for the past 10 years, volunteer numbers in Scotland have stayed at the same level. Also, according to the Scottish Household Survey conducted in 2016, 27% of adults reported having provided volunteering help to organisations and groups in the previous 12 months. 18% of adults that do volunteer do so several times a week, and a quarter of volunteers that provided unpaid help do so once a week. Three out of four adults that volunteer do so for up to 10 hours a month. Now, what these statistics show is that when people do volunteer, they recognize the benefits of it and they also enjoy it. And this makes sense to me because there are so many th great things about volunteering. You get to meet new people, develop new skills, and develop your own skills as they are, gain experience, make a difference in your local community, and most importantly of all, have fun. And I think we must do more and to shout about these benefits of volunteering and making it clear that volunteering isn't just, as I think some people view it, a one-way street where you are giving your time for nothing in return because you get so many intangible benefits uh, whilst at the same time supporting your community. And whilst we're speaking about, volunteer, about volunteering, Deputy Presiding Officer, I believe that it would be remiss of me not to take the opportunity to pay tribute to some of the volunteers and voluntary groups that are running in the West Scotland region, which I represent. And behind them, and we must never forget this, are the families we must never forget who give their support to those volunteers in their families, allowing them to do so. 
These organisations in my region include the Centre 81 Community Youth Centre in Gerlock Head, which I have to declare an interest as a member of the board, where the centre does great work in supporting young people in the area, providing opportunities and facilities for them to help with the help of volunteers, making it possible to deliver Route 81. Another group in my West Scotland region is the Friends of Gielston House and Garden, a group formed to promote, protect and preserve the presence of Gielston Gardens, house and estate in Cardross, bequeathed to the community, to the benefit of the local community. They're all doing a great job as well. And additionally, in the West Scotland, as mentioned earlier by my colleague Michelle Ballantyne, we are lucky enough to have a large number of cadet units. We have 18 army cadet units, eight air cadet, sorry, nine air cadet squadrons, and five sea cadet units, all run by volunteers. And they provide children from all uh, backgrounds with the opportunity to learn new skills and have the chance to take part in some unbelievable experiences, including the example of the air cadets, who can actually learn to fly a plane or a glider. Also, there are a number of Royal, Naval, Royal um, National Lifeboat Institute voluntary lifeboat stations in my region whose roles to save those who get themselves into trouble at sea, risking their own lives as volunteers to do so. Then, of course, we are lucky enough to have a great number of people volunteering to support local sports clubs and teams in this West Scotland region. And these are the reasons why we've been very successful over recent years for sportsmen and women coming from the West Scotland. And there are four examples of volunteering, all different from, from each other. Some are about sports, some are about providing new opportunities, protecting our culture and heritage, and even look after those in peril on the sea. But they also have one thing in common, that they support and enhance our communities. On my final point, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, I want to move briefly to onto a different type of volunteer and that is the political volunteer. If it wasn't for them, none of us would be here in this chamber today, right now. I'm sure our, all our colleagues in this chamber would agree how vital they are. I do think it is important that, to pay tribute to them as volunteers, whatever party or none. They are what, in, we, what we ensure that we have a vibrant and participatory participative democracy in Scotland by doing, so their, by doing their bit and fighting for their beliefs. Whether, whatever that they might be by delivering leaflets or stuffing envelopes or knocking on doors at election time, they give an invaluable service. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do our job of taking our views and ideas to and hearing from the electorate. And they help us give voters a real choice at elections. Thank you. I call Claire Adamson to be followed by Elaine Smith. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, I'm absolutely delighted to take part in today's debate. Um, when I was elected as a councillor in 2007, one of the tasks that I was given was to serve on the International Children's Games Board, um, which brought the Children's Games to Lanarkshire in 2011. It was my first experience of um, uh, recruiting volunteers, and it was, it was a really interesting process. And, and to see the community step up and ensure that those games were a success and that the young people from all over the world that were coming to take part were looked after and entertained and everything went well. It, it, it was a joy to see. And um, Alison Johnson mentioned how important volunteers are to sports, but whether it's the Commonwealth Games, the Homeless World Cup, all of these events could not take place without our volunteers that come together. And um, I, I was a volunteer myself, although, um, you know, I think it was Monica that said that volunteers are humble. I didn't even consider myself to be a volunteer. But as a DL Dragon's Den mum, I spent many a Saturday morning in the den cooking sausages for the, the junior rugby players. And it, as my husband coached the team, and again, he, he, we never thought of ourselves as volunteers. We were just parents. And I think for a lot of people, they are. They're just um, good citizens, good neighbours, parents, carers, and, and guardians, and, and, and don't consider what they are doing and the benefit to our society. And, and that's what today is all about, is recognising that. Yes, I will. Thank you. Michelle Ballantyne. Welcome and congratulating the 15,000 people that volunteer for the SRU to ensure that grassroots rugby actually takes place. There's an awful lot of us. <laughs> Claire Adamson. <laughs> because um, rugby is a huge um, passion of mine, as people know. I was very lucky to attend the uh, DL Festival of Youth this year, which had um, teams from all over Scotland, from um, the borders, from Edinburgh and Glasgow, coming together to take part on, on what was a spectacular day of rugby, um, with primary ones right through to, to um, senior secondary school um, uh, teams taking part that day. And uh, I was lucky enough to give out some of the medals, so it was really good. And the other reason why I'm very interested in talking about rugby today is because I have recently been involved with a social inclusion charity called the School of Hard Knocks. I hosted their event last year here 
And uh, they're an organisation that goes out and runs courses, mentoring and looking after people, tackling some of the issues around long-term unemployment, self-esteem, employability, and teaches life skills. And many of the people who do that for them now are people that have come through that programme and, and turned into volunteers themselves because it's been such a good um, experience for them. And it, it's, it is life skills um, uh, disguised as rugby. Which brings me on to, to my favourite, um, one of my favourite charities, Real Time Music in my area, and they describe themselves as youth work uh, disguised as rock and roll, um, which I think is quite cool. And um, I was just um, very lucky to be um, for for the fifth or sixth year um, with Real Time Music in Motherwell Town Centre um, when they were um, participating in the Sounds Mind Mental Health. Cha um, charity event just a few weeks ago and they had um, not only the live music but taster sessions in, in music and uh, skills for young people in the town centre that day. And um, real time are, are, are very important in my community because one of these um, groups that um, you see everywhere and involved in every initiative that's happening there and I should declare an interest because my son volunteers with them at the moment. But um, if I just talk very briefly, I know today is a day of celebration but we have had a very tragic experience in my constituency recently. We have a, had the deaths through suicide of a number of young, very young people, some of them school children in the area. And um, it has been devastating. People are looking for answers, they're looking for help. And I just wanted to talk about some of the charity organisations, the volunteers have to come together to support my community through this process. So Real Time Music are one of them. We have an organisation called Getting to Better Together, who are based in Shorts and work into the Wishaw locality, who um, have come together. FAMS, Families Against Murder Suicide, Chris's House, a suicide prevention charity in Wishaw, Full On Mental Health Charity, all who have um, come together and had um, community meetings to try and support the community through this, this um, process. And on the 16th of June, they are all coming together at Crate Nuke Mountain Bike Pump Track. And uh, the volunteers from Wisher Mountain Bike Club will be there to support young people. And alongside those fun activities on that day, they will be looking to recruit people to take part in Safe Talk training and assist training and, and working to support our community through what is an absolutely devastating time. And this is what volunteers bring to our communities. It's, it's such an important part of that community and it's about us all being safer and happier in Scotland and I thank them very much. Thank you, President Officer. Call Elaine Smith to be followed by Bob Doris. Thank you, presiding officer, and can I also draw attention to my registered of interest as a member of Unite the Union. National Volunteers Week gives us all an opportunity to reflect on the positive contribution that volunteering makes to the lives of our own families and communities across Scotland. And of course, we've already heard some excellent examples, and I know that we will hear more throughout the debate. And I particularly recognise the remarks of Claire Adamson as a rugby mum myself, and my husband also a past coach at Wayside's Strumpelier in Coatbridge. President officer, it's hard to select from the thousands of volunteer activity in my own area, but I would like to begin by commending the work done through the Lanarkshire Breastfeeding Initiative. As the author of the Breastfeeding Etc Scotland Act, and as I fed my own son Van, I have a particular interest in breastfeeding support. When Van was born, I was living hundreds of miles away from my family, and I was very dependent on the Breastfeeding Mothers Group and the volunteers who were running it in conjunction with the NHS. Having worked with local groups in drawing up my breastfeeding legislation and keeping in touch ever since, I know that volunteers, health workers and families all work together to promote the benefits of breastfeeding and the health of breastfeeding mothers. And through improving the care support and facilities available for breastfeeding mums, the health of mums and their babies is vastly improved with breastfeeding also being supported and sustained. There are about 500 premises in Lanarkshire who are now part of the Breastfeeding Welcome Scheme. And the Community Mums Network is going from strength to strength, and I'm sure that Parliament will want to recognise and congratulate those involved in that. I do, though, want to sound one general note of caution, which is that volunteers should enhance public services. They should not replace them. And it's also important to note that volunteers themselves require good support and training, and I have some direct experience of that um, because I worked as a volunteer manager um, a number of years ago in a GP practice and I'm aware that schemes such as the LBI will be most effective when they're delivered in collaboration with the core services. 
Presiding officer, the expanding role of food banks in many of our communities has highlighted the willingness of people to come forward as volunteers to provide these services. And there's no doubt that the public response to rising food poverty has been overwhelming. And I commend this volunteer effort across Scotland, often provided through churches. However, as highlighted so powerfully in Ken Loach's uh, film, I, Daniel Blake, some of the causes of increased dependence in food banks lie in the inhumane treatment of people through a punitive social security system. And that, combined with rising inward poverty, means that there's an unacceptable pressure on many households today. So we have to recognise that the increase in food banks and the consequent growth in volunteer numbers in these food banks is symptomatic of political choices and public spending decisions which need to be challenged and changed and as such Scottish Labour is ensuring that we poverty proof our policies because no one should be poor cold and hungry in 21st century Scotland. So while today's debate is about celebrating the massive contribution made by volunteers in so many ways it must also be about addressing those problems that are sometimes highlighted through an increase in the need for volunteers and in this instance, surely we don't wish to build a society for the future which depends on food banks as a solution to hunger. Presiding officer, the theme of this year's Volunteers Week is volunteering for all, celebrating the huge range of people who, have given, who give their time in so many ways. And, and drawn to a conclusion, I want to draw attention to an area in which I think volunteering often seems to go unnoticed. In workplaces up and down the country, lay members of trade unions give freely of their time to assist and support other colleagues striving to create safe and healthy working environments for all. And I'm very well aware of this, having spent nearly a decade as an ALGO then Unison branch secretary in the Highlands. Effective campaigns for a living wage, for equal pay, for dignity and respect at work, against discrimination and injustice, all of these depend on union volunteers. Agreement on facility time and some statutory work release times around health and safety legislation of course do provide for recognised trade union reps to do some of the work associated with their role and they must be protected and strengthened and certainly not cut. However, very many hours of volunteer time um, go into ensuring effective trade union and employee voice within workplaces and companies. Always at the end of a phone, ready to offer a helping hand to another colleague in an emergency, keeping up with changes in legislation, undergoing training in their own time on mental health awareness, signposting for other services and advice, and sadly, sometimes supporting families through the consequences of accidents or fatalities at work, trade unionists should be recognised and celebrated for the voluntary role that they play in our society. Volunteering takes many forms, people give their time in so many ways and I pay tribute today to all those who are making a difference through their actions across all of our communities. Call Bob Doris to be followed by Gordon Lindhurst. And thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Uh, on Friday last week, I, along with my colleague Patrick Grady, MP, had the privilege of opening the Maryhill Drinkwise Agewell Support Hub. The hub in Maryhill Borough Hall strives to help older adults reduce their alcohol consumption where it has the potential to cause harm. The Mayor Health facility demonstrates that people who have come through recovery often emerge with a passion to help others and their experience of the impact of drinking on their lives makes them uniquely qualified to support their peers. Drinkwise Age Well specifically opened the hub on the 1st of June, a deliberate decision as it fired the starting gun for Volunteer Week. That is because the Mayor Health hub will be staffed predominantly by such volunteers. They are not just giving their time and passion and drive free of charge, but they're bringing significant amount of skill and experience and credibility, something we should quite rightly celebrate during uh, Volunteer Week. And that credibility of volunteers is something that I want to explore further. Also based in my constituency are the fantastic Homestart Northwest. And I've spoken to them several times in this chamber, but volunteers from Homestar often visit vulnerable or struggling families in their homes. They offer support, friendship and practical assistance. They encourage the parents eh, to gain strength and emotional well-being for the ultimate benefit of their children and many other great worthwhile things they do. But they also have a credibility eh, due to their own life experience, as well as the fact that I made this point before, they are not a statutory service. They get buy-in and they get trust, and that is vital with many volunteers also. Now, the, home, the work of Home Start Glasgow North West also allows me to make another important point during Volunteer Week. 
and that's that their volunteers are well trained. Uh, a day a week, seven weeks course, about a dozen different uh, course themes that they can go on. I won't run, out the list, run through the list because of the time constraints, but they are well trained. They have capacity, but they also get professional training, and that is vital. And they also get peer support of each other. They've got a volunteer peer support group, so they can talk and interact with each other to further support them in their volunteering. And that's vitally important to support volunteers more generally. Volunteers have a drive that can cut through red tape and inactivity to achieve results. That's another point I would like to make uh, during this debate. And in that regard, I'd like to talk about Friends of Springburn Park. Uh, on Saturday, I attended the opening of Springburn Park's Community Village. And on Saturday and the Sunday, the two wonderful days of events. Now, uh, the organisation was created in summer 2016. It was constituted in October 2016. And in summer 2017, they, they, they saved the former depot site in Springburn Park that Glasgow City Council were going to demolish and that has now been turned into a community village. It will see a men's shed. It will see the Burlornock Uniform Bank based there. It has a community auditorium for performance space. It's got a boathouse that's hoping to turn into a community cafe, uh, ultimately. And there was the opening of an outdoor classroom. A new structure actually suggested by a local school girl uh, and funds won through participatory budgeting funded by the Scottish Government and um, supported by NG Homes. They also have big plans going forward. So had Springburn Park simply been agency led by Glasgow City Council, there wouldn't be a community village in the park. The place would have been demolished. That's another aspect to make up the volunteers uh, and that is their drive. And they sometimes see the bigger picture in the way that some agencies quite simply can't. Now, I actually scrubbed another part of, of my speech uh, because as I was preparing for my speech today, uh, I thought of Eleanor Brown, uh, who passed away at the age of 69 uh, on the 1st of May this year. Eleanor Brown uh, was a Rockhill resident in my constituency. Um, she was integral to the housing stock transfer to some appalling houses, quite frankly, in 1994. The Barnes Road Action Group, now part of Mary Hill Housing Association, and she kick-started uh, regeneration of Rock Hill. If it wasn't for Eleanor Brown, that simply wouldn't have happened. She went on to become the chair of Rock Hill Community Council, doing an amazing job there, and she set up Rock Hill Furniture Project, not just helping people who couldn't afford to furnish their own home, but actually reskilling people to bring furniture back up to standard always. Also, she was in the board of North End Communities, a hugely popular and successful community group in the local area, working with young kids. And she was much loved by those youngsters and is deeply missed. And to her contemporaries, uh, our admiration, uh, well, she's not my contemporary, quite frankly. She's far more experienced and able than, than I have been so far in my constituency. But uh, I have to say that uh, she'll be badly missed. Um, it's people like that. We shouldn't just celebrate current volunteers, but volunteers of years gone by who have transformed their communities, presiding officer. I call Gordon Lindhurst to be followed by Ruth Maguire. <clears throat> Deputy presiding officer, as a member of the cross-party group on volunteering and a volunteer myself, I am delighted to take part in this afternoon's debate, especially during Volunteers Week, where we take the time to thank everyone who gives up their valuable time to make a positive difference in the lives of others. As MSPs, it is a privilege to be able to experience and appreciate the variety and volume of different volunteers and charities throughout Scotland. Now, although the... Uh, rate of formal volunteering has remained stagnant over a decade, it is very encouraging to note the rise in youth volunteering to over 50% in 2016. And that can give us optimism for the future. After all, volunteering is valuable, not just for those who benefit from it, but for the volunteers themselves and their families. It is, of course, more blessed to give than to receive. Take the example of scouting and the report into it a decade ago. 91% of volunteers and 88% of youth members stated that scouting had helped them develop key skills, often setting them apart from some of their peers. 
it is easy to see how volunteering contributes to our economy as well. Great volunteering work is done by the third sector, helping to rehabilitate prisoners, for example. By readying them for release and a future outside prison, they can be helped to contribute positively to society and the economy. But is the modern economy within a globalized world appropriate, where longer hours at paid work are simply expected? The Modern Families Index, published by the charity Working Families, found in a recent report that 40% of part-time and full-time workers were working extra hours regularly, and almost a third were in effect working an additional day per week. As competition for people's time increases, we also need to recognize that sacrifices are made in order to volunteer. And again, I congratulate and thank all those who do so in spite of their busy, busy working lives. So what else can be done to encourage volunteering, particularly amongst those who wouldn't normally think about doing so? Some have had the benefit of a role model to encourage them, in my case, my mother. Uh, what can be done for those who may not have had that good fortune to have a positive role model in their lives? Well, only last week I visited Big Hearts Community Trust, the official charity of Hearts Football Club in Edinburgh. They provide a number of excellent programs, including kinship care and projects for lonely older people. But rather than duplicating good work, they also send their volunteers to other existing programs to help run by charities such as Fresh Start or Care and Repair Edinburgh. Some of those Hearts volunteers might not normally volunteer for those charities. And indeed, some of them may not come from a background where volunteering is a traditional way of spending spare time. The difference can be that in this way, they're encouraged and brought into volunteering, wearing a t-shirt with the football crest on it that shows they're representing their club in the work they do. It gives them a sense of pride and can make all the difference. I know that other club charities as well can appeal to similar people who might not normally be reached for volunteering. So this is just one example of a pragmatic way of encouraging volunteering. And another useful tool would be the volunteer indicator, which indicates to people how cohesive and connected their community is. Painting a picture of volunteering in a particular locality can empower people to think about what they can do. Now, a decision was taken by the Scottish Government not to include this as an indicator in the National Performance Framework. The CPG and volunteering disagreed and hoped it would be looked at again, and so do I. Deputy Presiding Officer, Scotland is a proud volunteering nation. However, we still have a long way to go in boosting numbers and ensuring we continue to be a volunteering nation, proving the truth that it is more blessed to give than to receive and that voluntary unpaid work can be equally beneficial to both society, the economy and the life of our nation as a whole. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Andrews. I call Ruth McGuire to be followed by Joanne Lamont, please. Ms. McGuire. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Volunteers Week provides an opportunity to celebrate the important contribution that volunteers make to Scotland. This is the 34th annual Volunteers Week and a good chance for us all to say thank you to all those who give their time, energy, skills and commitment to our communities. This weekend, things got off to a great start in my part of Ayrshire with not one but two fantastic events, shaping North Ayrshire participatory budgeting and Fee in the Park. The participatory budgeting event took place in the volunteer rooms in Irvine. There were 32 local groups providing a really wide and worthwhile range of activities and services for our community. Irvine Community Art Group, the Golden Girls, the Ayrshire Community Trust, Irvine and Troon Cancer Care, Coast Watch, Burtry and Broomlands Tenants and Residents Association, Irvine Meadow Community Club, Scottish Maritime Museum Men's Shed, Castle Park Sewing Group, Rainbow of Hope Bereavement Group, Touched by Suicide Scotland, Irvine Neighbourhood Youth Forum, Irvine Beat FM, Police Scotland Youth Volunteers, Irvine Takeda Karate, Irvine Care and Share, Showtime Youth Theatre, Scottish Karate Alliance, Redburn Youth Management Committee, Irvine Seniors, Fullerton Community Association, Irvine and Dreghorn Brass Band, Kenshin 
Sukokai Karate Club, Irvin Community Council, Centre Stage, Lawthorn Parent Council, Irvin Special Events Forum, the New Beginnings Group, Springside Summer Club, North Ayrshire's Young Persons Epilepsy Support Group, Irvin Lassie's Burns Club, St Mark's Parent Council, and last, but by no means least, the wonderful Fifth Dreghorn Brownies, who I was delighted to learn will be doing their Citizen Girl badge after the summer. Presiding officer, I list all of these wonderful groups who were there on Saturday, not just because as their MSP, I couldn't possibly pick favourites or leave anyone out, but also because the folk in the hall in Irvine on Saturday fits so well with the theme of this year's Volunteers Week, volunteering for all. There really was something for everyone. All ages catered for, many, many different things to participate in. Over 500 local people attended and cast their votes on a sunny Saturday morning, a reflection, I think, of the reach and impact that these groups and these volunteers have. I applaud the volunteers and thank them again for all that they're doing for our community. And of course, volunteering is beneficial to the individuals as well. It can help gain confidence, um, giving a chance to try something new and, and building a real sense of achievement. Volunteering is about making a difference, different to your, uh, dif um, having a positive impact on people and your community. It's a great way to meet people, be part of something, learn new skills or take on a challenge. And importantly, as we've heard, to have fun. Volunteering have a great, volunteers have a great time. Presiding officer, I just want to finish by quoting one of our wonderful local volunteers that we have in Irvine. Billy Lamb from Coast Watch, and I'm going to quote directly from a post he made this week. This is Volunteers Week. As with many charities and voluntary organisations, Coast Watch Scotland Irvine volunteers give their time to the community. Volunteers all see their roles differently. Some are retired or semi-retired and want to continue to carry on working. Some feel they have time to give to the community. Some see volunteering as a route to employment. Some see volunteering as an interest away from normal working life. It doesn't matter how you see volunteering or what you think a volunteer should be. Volunteers are welcome and respected in the community. You give as much of your time as you wish. You meet new friends. You can become skilled in new fields. You can feel great satisfaction in carrying out your voluntary role successfully. Think about it. For a few months, for a few hours a month, you can become a volunteer. Presiding officer, volunteering is for all, and I'm grateful to all of those who do. Thank you. Thank you very much. I call Joanne Lamont to be followed by Emma Harper. Ms. Lamont, please. Thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to participate in a debate celebrating the work of volunteers. An appreciation of and respect for volunteering has been a significant thread in the thinking of this Parliament since its establishment in 1999. And I want to congratulate and thank volunteers wherever they are. What sport could survive without volunteers out at all times of the day and in all weathers to support um, those who want to participate in sport and often with no public funding at all? I think of all those like St Andrew's First Aid volunteers and the wonderful young thistles who were in the Parliament so recently, teaching life skills, saving lives and often allowing community events to take place. I think of all those like the volunteer ambassadors from Down Syndrome Scotland who will be supporting the wonderful World Down Syndrome Congress which will happen in Glasgow this summer with their help. Our gratitude to volunteers is immense but we need to be more than grateful. Volunteers are not just helping with stuff. Volunteers and voluntary organisations have often been created out of an understanding of need and the development of the solutions that will meet that need. In my lifetime, there are many examples, whether in housing, tackling violence against women, supporting people with learning disabilities, creating community transport, and so many more, where volunteers have created policies and practices that have transformed people's lives. That relationship and mutual respect is fundamental. I reflect that in the past, there were local voluntary sector compacts and a Scottish level, there was a Scottish compact with the voluntary sector. And I would ask the Cabinet Secretary in her summing up to comment on whether she would consider reviving these for they allowed us, as they did, a more equal relationship, even when voluntary organisations were in receipt of Scottish Government funding. It would, of course, be to the detriment of us all 
if the, volunteers of vol the voices of volunteers were managed and silenced, and the compacts were a way of bringing those voices together. So it would be remiss of me if I did not take the opportunity to make the case for proper, secure and stable funding for the structures within which volunteers and volunteering can flourish, an issue which many volunteers have highlighted to me. Yesterday I had the opportunity to visit again Glasgow South West Food Bank, an inspiring place where fantastic volunteers quietly offer much needed support with dignity, compassion and professionalism. I was told that between 12 and 2 o'clock yesterday alone, they issued 100 food packs. And that to me is a powerful inst inst illustration of the scale of the need that they are meeting. People are referred by charities and other groups working in our communities, but critically, they're also now being referred by statutory organisations like Social Work. And I was told that there have been instances where staff managing the Scottish Welfare Fund are redirecting people to their food bank. And worryingly, there is evidence that staff are calculating the estimated value of a food parcel and deducting that cost from the crisis loans people are receiving. And I would welcome a commitment from the Cabinet Secretary in her summing up to explore what seems to be a worrying approach and establish how widespread a uh, practice it is. The point about the role of food banks is that while no one wants a long-term future for food banks, they are now in many communities, in effect, an emergency service to which people are being directed. We support prevention, of course we do, but it is essential that we support that emergency help too. We see volunteers here on the front line of social security, providing a much needed safety net. Volunteers in South West Glasgow Food Bank say that they need the core funding to support a full-time member of staff, to ensure the training, vetting and supporting of volunteers, doing the outreach work with agencies, generating donations and interest in their work, and a key role in adding to the understanding of why people may be hungry and going without the basics of everyday life. And I would be grateful if the Cabinet Secretary would agree to a meeting with myself and those from Glasgow South West Food Bank to look at how they can be supported in the work that they're doing, whether it's the Scottish Government or by local government, so that they can ensure their volunteers are properly supported to do the thing that they really, really want to do. In valuing volunteers, we need to listen to them too. They desire mutual respect, certainty in funding, and a space to plan and grow. We all hold volunteers in awe. We should ensure we're doing all we can to liberate those very best, best instincts of humanity to make a difference across our communities. And I look forward to the Cabinet Secretary's response to the specifics, but welcome very much the opportunity to play my small part in celebrating those who do so much for others. Thank you, Ms. Lamont. I call Emma Harper to be followed by Brian Whittle. Ms. Harper, please. Thank you, President Officer. Martin Luther King Jr. made a quote, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? We all have busy lives and it's hard to juggle work, home, family and other things in our thrang and busy schedules to find time to volunteer. But the benefits of volunteering is enormous for the volunteers, the families and our communities. Volunteering can help promote health and well-being. It can be a way to find friends, connect with people, reach out to the community, learn new skills, and volunteering can benefit career progression. And of course, it can be fun and bring huge fulfillment to the lives of the volunteers. And I'd like to add my thanks also to all of the volunteers of all ages across Scotland in this week's Volunteering for All theme. This week, um, June 1st through 7th, provides us with an opportunity to celebrate the exceptional contribution that volunteers make across society and to many people's lives. I remind Chamber that I'm a registered nurse and as such, I'm required to keep my registration active. And one way I'm seeking to do this is by becoming a volunteer at the new Dumfries and Galloway Royal Infirmary. And this is a uh, been difficult for me so far because I've managed all the application process but I need to go through the prerequisite induction programme. But members of the public are welcome to volunteer in a range of hospital departments and services at the acute care hospital just outside Dumfries in South Scotland which is part of the region that I represent. 
And as this year is the bro year of young person, young persons are encouraged to participate in the hospital volunteer program too. There are many options across Galloway which could provide volunteering opportunities from the men's shed, which Bob Doris has already mentioned, such as the one in Dalbiti, where Sir Billy Connolly visited last week for his upcoming telly show. And there are many Robert Burns associations and clubs which are run by volunteers with an appetite to champion the life, loves and works of our bard and our good Scots language. Presiding officer, the DNG Integration Joint Board uh, team led by Penny Halliday has been instrumental in the transforming Wigtonshire Health and Social Care Integration Programme. Their goal is to focus on the future sustainability of health and social care in the southwest of the region. And the programme's goal is to bring together community councillors, health and social care professionals, and develop opportunities for sustainability and to increase the number of volunteers in both the hospitals and in the community. They had workshops last week, which were a good platform to start the transforming Wigdenshire process. And when I spoke to Julie Curry, one of the enthusiastic coordinators in the team, she told me the project is open for young persons to get involved and that the team has already involved members of the Scottish Youth Parliament. In fact, one of the MYSPs has already put in over 500 hours of volunteering. We can all find a few hours to volunteer, helping keep your Scotland bonny with beach cleans, nurdle cleanups and other litter pickups. Recently, I joined a beach clean group at Monreith and another family oriented litter pickup at Glentrul. That was a park in Dumfries with the lift folks. That's Lockside is Families Together. They are an organisation of volunteers led by volunteers and Lyft brings the people of Lockside together in a strong show of community pride. This week, the third sector, Dumfries and Galloway, is holding their volunteer Oscars ceremony called the Voskers on Sunday, uh, Thursday evening in Dumfries. And one of the young men from Stranraer, Innes Curry, has been nominated as a young volunteer of the year. Innes has been very active and will be working with Camp America in the USA this summer. Presiding officer, when Sir Harry Burns gave us evidence at Health and Sport Committee, he spoke about the people of Scotland flourishing. And flourishing is such a positive, objective word to grow or develop in a vigorous way. Achieving a flourishing population demands not just that we improve physical health, but also that all individuals and communities feel supported to grow in our communities in an emotional, psychological and social well-being way. So therefore, presiding officer, if Scotland and our people are going to flourish, I would suggest we candidate without us all supporting our volunteers and becoming volunteers ourselves. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ah, uh, Mr Stewart, no sooner do you come in, then you're in trouble. Can I call Brian Whittle, followed by Mark MacDonald, please? Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Already heckled by a member of my own party. Uh, I, I refer the uh, Chamber to my register of interest in that I'm a board member of the NSPCC and also uh, still an active coach. Uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, volunteers come in many forms, um, from those giving an hour or two of their time to, to pick up litter on the local beach, to those who are prepared to be on call 24-7, like the RNLI, the are people living in local communities who give up of their free time to learn how to save lives, then train every week, as well as carrying that instantly recognisable pager, which can summon them at any time to any number of issues, mm. from a boat in distress, to a missing person, to someone threatening to harm themselves. And where would we be without the important organisations such as Childline or the Samaritans and how many countless thousands of young people have they helped in their time? And the Cabinet Secretary uh, will recognise with her uh, many athletics prowesses that, that, that she has done, that the importance of, uh, of, of the volunteer sector in uh, things like the park run and in marathons. I mean, every local park run relies on volunteers to organise and marshal runners. Then there's the big organisations like the Red Cross and the National Trust and the charity shops like the British Heart Foundation, Cancer Research and the Ayrshire Hospice. Or the smaller local community groups who do everything from take care of a piece of woodland to coaching a sports teams. There's groups who are working on the regeneration of their local communities. Groups like the New Mills uh, Regeneration Association which was formed in 2014 and has been awarded the Queen's Award for Voluntary Service 2018 
which is the highest award recognising excellence in voluntary activities carried out by groups in the community. And I recently visited Whiteley's retreat, which uh, local volunteers stepped in after the closure of Malcolm Sergeant House in Presswick and have now bought a farm outside of Alloway. They have raised the funds to transform it into a home away from home for young people who are dealing with cancer or other serious medical issues. Not only are the people behind the project volunteers, but the work to repurpose and improve the buildings and landscapes relies totally on volunteers. Local members of the public donating their time and effort, local tradesmen putting their skills to good use, giving up weekends and evenings to do so in the more specialised jobs. Project like this, projects like this changing lives, Deputy Presiding Officer, not just for the people uh, who the project was created to help, but also for the lives of the volunteers themselves. As Mahatma Gandhi said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. And volunteering can have a real physical and crucially a mental health benefit. It can be a gateway into employment for people who have been out of work or have never worked before and don't have the confidence perhaps in their own abilities. It can be an escape from the day's work. I know my time spent coaching after a week in Parliament is good for my head. Just the sense of self-worth and satisfaction that of, uh, comes from helping others is invaluable. And, and I've mentioned many times before in this chamber the work of Sam Mullen at the Doon Valley Boxing Club and the, the way he has actually managed to, to, to change the whole environment, that whole community environment. I think what he does there is quite incredible. And I wanted to take this opportunity to thank my own coach, Hugh Muir, who um, I met when I was 11 years old when I joined Trin Tortoises and he coached me uh, all the way to the end of my career uh, at 32 and not counting me he coached over 50 Scottish and Scottish school medalists and I said before I, 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 he kind of inspired me to, to get into coaching and, and I coached on Monday night before coming through to Parliament and then again I leave here and straight, head straight to the tra track and at weekends if time permits and there's definitely a therapeutic element to delivering a training session that leaves athletes lying on the track it's, it's the way, it's the way I, I de-stress, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer. Uh, I, I also now work with four uh, nine, nine, ten-year-olds, including my youngest daughter, uh, which is kind of my third time around here, uh, which is not so much coaching as herding cats, and I'm not quite so convinced in the therapeutic nature of dealing with them, but all the same, it is good fun. And there is that coaching network that I'm, I'm plugged into uh, as a member of the European Coach, Coaching Association. That interaction is very removed from what we do in here. And, and what I would say, for want of a better, better expression, it's very real. And volunteering, volunteering opens up opportunities in giving of time to help others. Mentoring, both in the sense of helping people develop life skills and businesses, volunteering time and resources to give young people experience of the workplace and let them develop skills that can serve them in future. Uh, future careers. And I wanted to just quickly mention uh, South Ayrshire Tigers, which is a, a power chair football team, uh, which, who I'm currently raising sponsorship for by running around the tune, and I'm hoping some of you will volunteer to sponsor me. Um, and the volunteer coaches that, 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 that they do and the support for the carers, which is above and beyond their normal role. Uh, we did uh, have a, a, a team that played uh, uh, in, uh, against the Scottish team, and in, in 10 minutes we were 6-0 down. And uh, Alexander Stewart here uh, 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 kind of spawned his nickname of Davros and his ability uh, <laughs> in there. So I, I will, uh, if I could just, if I could close with a quote, uh, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, the best way to not feel hopeless is to get up and do something. Don't wait for good things to happen to you. If you go out and make some good things happen, you will fill the world with hope and you will fill yourself with hope as well. Uh, Barack Obama. Deputy Presiding Officer. Thank you. I don't know if really free advertising is part of your role in here for sponsorship, but we'll let that pass. Uh, call Mark McDonald, be followed by Claire Hockey, please. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Like other members in this chamber, I have a number of uh, extremely valuable voluntary organisations uh, in my constituency, and the challenge that I've faced, as many others have, is which of those to give mention to today. Uh, and so I'm going to try and rattle through some of them. One of the challenges that exists in relation to volunteering uh, is often how to ensure that new volunteers can be attracted. For many, uh, their volunteering can be transient, particularly if it is a parent volunteering while their child is involved with a particular youth organisation. Their volunteering tends to last for the period that their child is involved before they then move on, and the organisation then has to seek to attract new volunteers from a new cohort. Of parents. There are some exceptions to this rule. Um, scouting has been mentioned by a number uh, of, of members, including David Torrance, whose 
uh, long-standing commitment to, uh, and involvement with scouting is well recorded. Um, I want to make mention of my uh, constituent, Moira Milligan, uh, who is the cub leader uh, in the community of Dyson, my constituency. Uh, when I was a cub, uh, Moira was the cub leader, uh, and to this day she remains the cub leader uh, in Dice. She's now cub leader to a generation of children whose parents she was the cub leader to as well. And I'm sure there are possibly others involved in the scouting movement across Scotland uh, who can lay testament to similar claims. Uh, Michelle Ballantyne and Monica Lennon highlighted the challenges that are faced in terms of low-income communities and encouraging uh, volunteering within those areas. And with that in mind, I wanted to put on record uh, the appreciation that I have for the work that uh, Station House Media Unit, or SHMU, uh, does in my constituency. I know the Cabinet Secretary will be familiar with it. She's visited it in the past. Um, they offer significant volunteering opportunities, whether it's presenting radio shows uh, or producing community-focused magazines, uh, which are made by people in regeneration communities for people in regeneration communities and are about celebrating the diversity within those communities and shouting about the positive things that happen, which uh, very often don't see the light of day unless those communities themselves are the ones making the noise about it. Brian Whittle mentioned Park Run, um, free, a free timed 5K, which runs every Saturday morning in communities the length and breadth of Scotland. And he's highlighted it's run by uh, volunteers. There's often a core group of volunteers, but they try to attract others uh, who take part on a, on a Saturday morning to volunteer occasionally. Uh, I myself have volunteered a number of times at my local park run. It's very rewarding to see hundreds of people turning up uh, to run 5K, some of whom uh, are seasoned athletes who can run 5K in about 16, 17 minutes others who take the time to walk the course simply to get that, fi that five kilometres of activity in the week that they might not otherwise get were that opportunity not provided for them. And I want to take the opportunity to uh, give a shout out to my constituent, Katie Gregg, uh, who established the Junior Park Run in Aberdeen, which is run in the Duthie Park. Uh, it's a two kilometre run uh, and is uh, aimed at four to 14 year olds. Uh, at the last uh, Junior Park Run that was held, they had 152 participants. And that I think is a fantastic opportunity being provided to young people to get active and get involved. And who knows, uh, in future, uh, we may read of them following in Brian Whittle's footsteps at the Commonwealth Games as a result of their early introduction to running uh, at uh, Parkrum. Um, uh, recently, uh, in uh, the end of April, um, the churches in Aberdeen organised an event to invite politicians along to see the work that uh, faith groups were doing within the communities of the city. Now, I want to highlight two projects from my own constituency. The first of those is the Living Well Project, which began as a charity established uh, in the parish of New Hills in my constituency to operate a befriending service in the north of the city to tackle social isolation. Uh, from there it has expanded and there are now four dementia cafes being run in churches across the city. Three of those are in my constituency at New Hills, Old Macker and Hilton and provide opportunities for people uh, to come into a social setting uh, to reminisce uh, and to uh, tackle the isolation that can sometimes be felt by those who are elderly, vulnerable uh, and who, who have dementia. I also want to highlight the Fine Peace Cafe, which is run in Sheddixley Baptist Church in my constituency. Uh, not only does it offer opportunities uh, for individuals with learning disabilities to uh, be part of the work of the cafe, but also at the end of every year, they distribute their profits to other uh, voluntary organisations and charities within the city of Aberdeen. So giving, giving back uh, to the community. And finally, presiding officer, I just want to highlight the AAAs in my constituency, a social support group for those on the autistic spectrum, primarily targeted at teenagers and young adults. All their staff and volunteers are on the autistic spectrum, and they're currently working as part of a group of organisations to re-establish a one-stop shop in the city, having previously lost the service that was being provided. Uh, there is so much that I could go on and say, but I know time is short. Uh, but it is true that volunteers are the heart of our communities, and it is true, truly correct that we should celebrate them both in volunteers week and all year round. Thank you, Mr MacDonald. And I now call Claire Hockey, who will be the Oh, there you are. Who's the last speaker in the open debate, please? Thank you, Presiding Officer. Across the length and breadth of Scotland, every single day, there are thousands of selfless people who willingly give up their own time in the service of their communities and for other people. 
Quite simply, volunteers make an incredible contribution to Scottish society, and I'm very grateful for the opportunity to thank them in today's debate, as well as to be able to draw attention to a few of the great voluntary groups from my own constituency. I'm delighted that in Rutherglen constituency is the home of thousands of dedicated volunteers working across a range of different sectors and it's because of their tireless work and commitment that our communities are better places to live and work. According to the Scottish Household Survey in South Lanarkshire an estimated 25% of the population volunteer in a number of activities including youth work in the Scouts and Guides to helping out at the Rutherglen and Cambus Lang Food Bank and from those giving up their time at Revolve Recycle on Main Street, Rutherglen, to the coaches at Blantyre Soccer Academy at the other end of my constituency. Volunteers are our, com are our community's most important resource and they're our biggest assets. These are people from my constituency volunteering in my constituency. However, we owe a debt of gratitude to those who volunteer nationally. For example, those who do incredible work manning the telephones at charities like Samaritans and Childline. But, Presiding Officer, there's a particular group of volunteers who operate throughout the whole of Scotland that I wish to speak about today. And I want to put on record my thanks and appreciation for them, for which is often an unrecognised contribution to local democracy, our community councils. Created 45 years ago through the Local Government Scotland Act 1973, our voluntary community councillors have been a mainstay in our local communities ever since. According to the Scottish Government's website, there are over 1,200 community councils currently in existence, and five of them, Rutherglen, Burnside, Cambus Lang, Halfway and Blantyre, proudly serve in my constituency. They act as a vital link between our communities and local authorities, and they play a crucial role in ensuring public bodies are aware of the opinions and needs of the communities they serve, and they're arguably the foundation of our democracy. Only last week I attended the Cambus Lang Futures Forum meeting which is organised by Cambus Lang Community Council and it's looking at the regeneration of the town centre. It's an incredibly exciting project and it's one which the new SNP administration at South Lanarkshire Council is supporting through various initiatives too. Another example of the great work done by community councils which I actually raised three months ago in this chamber was the campaigning by Blantyre and Halfway Community Councils against the proposed incinerator in Hamilton. Both community councils undertook a major campaign in opposition to the White Hill incinerator and over a couple of months both had knocked on the door of almost every single house from within their council wards and in doing so they amassed over 4,000 objections to the proposal. Whether it's working to regenerate town centres or campaign against planning applications or even arranging community clear-ups or hosting gala days, community councillors devote incredible time and effort to our communities. Presiding officer, today's debate has allowed us to celebrate Scotland's volunteers, but it should also act as a call to get more people involved too. While levels of volunteering have remained stable over the last few years, and with a growth in young people volunteering, many community councils across Scotland are either shutting down or getting smaller in terms of membership. And I therefore strongly encourage anyone with either an interest in politics or a desire to do more in their community to join their community, local community council. Presiding officer, now is probably the best time to volunteer in community councils too. In addition to the Community Empowerment Act, which is giving people an even greater involvement in local decisions, the Scottish Government has also set councils a target of having at least 1% of their budget subject to participatory budgeting. And although not exclusive to community councils, they are able to benefit through this, as Cambus Land Community Council will attest after being the recipients of over £60,000 last year for their Greening Cambus Land campaign. Community councils now have the opportunity to have a much more direct and substantive say in our local communities, so please get involved. Presiding officer, I would like to thank not only my constituents who volunteer in community councils, but everyone else who devotes their time to other causes across the country. Our society is so much better because of what you do, and I thank you. Thank you. And before I move to closing speeches, can I say I'm very disappointed, Mr Lindhurst, who's not gracing us with his presence for the summing up. So I expect a note from him to explain why he's not going to listen to the closing speeches. Um, I now call Ian Gray. Mr Gray, a generous six minutes, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. I think um, there have been uh, three themes uh, to our debate this afternoon on uh, celebrating volunteering. Uh, the volume of volunteering, the breadth of it, uh, and the depth of volunteering uh, too. 
Um, the volume, I think, is something uh, which is important because volunteering is one of those things that often you, you don't know it's there uh, unless for some reason you become involved in it. I became aware of that when my wife and myself became guide dog puppy walkers uh, and immediately discovered an extensive community of guide dog puppy walkers all around us who had been there all the time uh, volunteering in uh, uh, that, uh, that line of work, but which most people don't really notice. Uh, uh, similarly, I am disappointed Mr Lindhurst is here because he had the cheek to mention uh, the Big Hearts Foundation, and so I feel uh, obliged to uh, mention the Hibernian Community Foundation, which, uh, <laughs> as my register of interest shows, I chair. Uh, and when I took that role on, it was a, a, a first uh, dabble on my part into the world of community football and community football teams. And I remain astonished at the thousands and thousands of people who give their time generously and freely so that these community football clubs uh, and courses can operate and uh, children and young people in particular uh, can get that kind of sporting opportunity. And I guess in any week in this parliament, all of us have revealed to us uh, enormous efforts of volunteering that we probably knew nothing about uh, prior to that event. So the volume is enormous and the breadth and variety is too. And we've heard a lot about that, more about uh, sport, for example, from Alison Johnson uh, and then from Brian Whittle. And indeed the Scottish Sports Association tell us that each year, 23 million hours of volunteering are devoted uh, to volunteering uh, in sport, incredible. Uh, a, a completely different kind of volunteering uh, described uh, to us passionately by Joanne Lamont and Elaine Smith uh, in the food banks, which are so necessary, unfortunately, in the communities, the length and breadth of this country. Through to the uniformed organisations, uh, including the Scouts, of course, that Mr Torrance uh, spoke to us about. Uh, one that uh, I, I wanted to mention from my own constituency, a group of volunteers who came together and solved a problem I had never even thought about existing uh, is Beach Wheelchairs North Berwick, who have worked hard to create the opportunity for wheelchair users to enjoy the beach uh, with their friends and families. And uh, so successfully that that's now spread up the coast to Port Seton uh, and also uh, to Portobello. Elaine Smith also mentioned uh, those uh, volunteers who do work in their trade unions to try and improve uh, the lives and working conditions of their fellow workers. And, President Officer, I'm perhaps disappointed that uh, uh, we've all been too embarrassed to talk about the many political party volunteers uh, on the backs of whom we find ourselves uh, here fulfilling this role as MSPs. We shouldn't be embarrassed about that because whatever party they are working for, they are working and giving of their time freely in order to make Scotland a better place. And though we might disagree uh, about how we should do that. I think all of us appreciate the importance of that uh, level of engagement. But volunteering is also, <laughs> volunteering is also deep and, and profound. And uh, Bob Doris, in what I thought was one of the most thoughtful speeches uh, of the afternoon, talked about Homestart, a tremendous organisation, also very active in my own constituency in East Lothian. And they've been um, uh, putting out on social media this week experiences, testimonies from their volunteers. And one of them uh, is from Elizabeth Butler, who volunteers in East Lothian for Homestart. And I just wanted to read a little bit of what she says. She says, just turning up and being there every week, it was just little, but it made a massive impact. It is inspiring to see how much people can grow and change and become what they want to be with just that wee tiny bit of hope. We are just coming in as human beings, and that's where the difference is made. And that's a powerful testimony, I think, to the profound influence that the volunteering of someone like Elizabeth through Homestart can have on a family. When I used to work for Oxfam, uh, and I was privileged uh, to visit all, all sorts of work that Oxfam did, landmine clearance in Cambodia, community dam building in Zimbabwe, the victims of conflict in far too many uh, countries, I was always struck at the incredible power of an enterprise which could put together the voluntary work of so many volunteers in Oxfam shops in every high street in Scotland 
uh, and make a genuine, a genuine difference to those who were struggling with those massive geopolitical issues. The truth is, and many have uh, said this in different ways, that volunteering is not an extra. It is fundamental to our society. Michelle Ballantyne listed all the ways in which one community uh, is supported by volunteering. And Monica Lennon made very clear how when Joe Cox talked about more uniting us than dividing us, volunteering is exactly one of those fundamental ties which bind us together in such an important way. They make people feel valued, part of something. They give us a sense of belonging to something that is worth belonging to. The truth is, volunteering for all doesn't just mean everybody should volunteer. It means we all benefit. But I want to close on the point that Joanne Lamont made. Because it is not enough to celebrate and appreciate volunteering. We must go from this debate today resolved to respect it and to support it properly. Thank you. I call Jamie Halker Johnson, a generous seven minutes, Mr. Halker Johnson. Thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. Um, this debate has been a very positive way of marking um, volunteers, a volunteering week, uh, highlighting the commitment of volunteers from Scotland's cities to our most remote and rural communities. Many members have spoken about their own experiences, uh, volunteering in their constituencies and regions. And it's shown just some of the breadth of activities that volunteer activity can cover. In some cases, we've heard about professionals with adapted skills and training taking on long-term commitments, and in others, uh, about people drawn together by circumstance to fix a problem or to provide something in their communities, as Ian Gray mentioned with the group Helping Beach uh, Wheelchair Access. What unites volunteers in these circumstances is a mindset. Uh, whether it's uh, called altruism, civic-mindedness, uh, or something else, when I was a new candidate at the 2005 general election, my organizing secretary had a poster on the wall of our office in, in, uh, in Elgin. It read, nothing is stronger than the heart of a volunteer. And it's a message that has resonated with me over the years. I know the motion mentions a figure of two billion, uh, two billion, but I think it's hard to put a true economic value on volunteering. Assessments always seem to fall short because as Claire Adamson mentioned, uh, in many cases, the most committed volunteers don't even consider what they're doing as volunteer work. To them, it's nothing more than pitching in or playing their part. And volunteering covers so many sectors. In health, organizations like the Royal Voluntary Service, which began its life as the Women's Voluntary Service in 1938, is one of Britain's largest volunteering charities and celebrating its 80th anniversary this year. Many, be, many will be familiar with the RVS from its network of hospital shops and cafes, but its work is so much broader, supporting older people to live independently, supporting emergency services during major incidents, organizing local community transport are just some of those examples. Or to those uh, staff who help charity shops, uh, raising money for vital medical research or support, which can change in many cases, save lives. And of course, those who look after family and friends or who keep an eye on a neighbor, or someone in their community providing crucial care support. And as has been mentioned before in politics, Claire Hockey mentioned um, uh, community councils and absolutely right too. And even those who campaign for political parties or other campaigns are extremely important. People who brave bad weather, bad tempers, and the prospects of a Saturday leafleting, not for reward, but because they believe in a candidate or a cause. And in sports, uh, you'll be delighted to know that I'm not going to try and tap anybody up for half marathon sponsorship anytime soon. But, br but Brian Whittle talk, uh, talked about the experience of the more elite end of sports coaching. And my experience is a little lower down the ladder, perhaps. But the charity rugby club I helped found and run in 1998, Godfather's Rugby, has for the last 20 years raised thousands for Click Sergeant Cancer Charity. And every one of the committee members and the players is a volunteer, someone who gives up their time and their support uh, and their time to support our work. And that's happening across Scotland, where thousands of people are turning out to help make sure people, other people can be involved in sports or other activities such as riding for the disabled, activities they wouldn't be able to do otherwise. And it's often forgotten that there is volunteering in our emergency services too, special constables and voluntary and auxiliary firefighters, to name some of them. And of course, in the Highlands and Islands, um, the mountain rescue, many of them are volunteers and played, provide a crucial role. And of course, no one from an island community like mine in Orkney can uh, ignore the vital role of the volunteers of the RNLI, volunteers who give up their time and, in, in the most tragic cases, their lives to help those in distress. But it's not just here in the UK that volunteers make a difference. For many years, the UK has had a very proud tradition of helping people abroad too. 
One of the most uh, foremost organizations in this regard has been VSO, which in addition to its funding from the Department for International Development, received some support from the Scottish Government's Climate Justice Fund as well. And it's celebrating a major milestone this year as well, marking 60 years since it was founded. Since then, its influence has been global, not only in the work it does, but inspiring similar organizations in other countries. And I'd like to see more being done to provide opportunities for a wider group of people from a more diverse background to volunteer abroad. Uh, abroad. A gap year of volunteering shouldn't just, shouldn't just be for those who can afford it. In my own region, today is the last day of the 18th Shetland Classic Motor Show, another organization, another event founded by volunteers Morris Mully, Graham Johnston and others that provides a major boost to the local economy. And only last week, the Queen's Award for Voluntary Service was given to Moravia Centre in Murray, Fockerbers Heritage, Murray Handy Person Services, and Step by Step in Murray, recognising their fantastic work. And the Men's Shed organisation movement across the whole of Scotland goes from strength to strength, and particularly in Orkney. And I commend the work of Morgan Harkis and others who recently built a shed for the local Blue Door charity, themselves a recipient of the Queen's Award for Voluntary Services in 2017, and whose founder, Rita Jameson, was awarded the British Empire Medal earlier this year for services to the community in Orkney. As Maurice Corrie said, volunteering isn't just one way. It's not just about volunteer, uh, volunteer, volunteers giving up their valuable time for the good, the good of their community. The volunteer can benefit hugely too. And I think a quote from the uh, Orkney Men's Shed website says it rather nicely. If you become a member of the Shed, you run the very real risk of becoming more interested in life and your surroundings, more healthy both physically and mentally, and will almost certainly miss many televised repeats of Strictly Come Baking on Ice. <laughs> Across the Parliament, uh, many of my colleagues have had very interesting things to say. Michelle uh, Ballantyne talked about her own experiences in her area uh, and also the bar barriers to volunteering, as did uh, Monica Lennon. Alex Cole Hamilton rightly said that volunteering is fragile and, and, and must be supported. Uh, Claire Adamson highlighted the importance of volunteering in mental health in her, in her community. Uh, Elaine Smith talked about um, areas such as breastfeeding and other areas that were important but not often thought about. Brian Whittle mentioned um, uh, volunteering as a gateway into work, which I thought was um, uh, another very interesting and, and absolutely correct um, uh, statement. And uh, Bob Doris talked about the importance of training, and I think this is something that we could probably all agree on. Um, Gordon Lintas also spoke about, this book about the increase in volunteering uh, in uh, the younger people against the relative stagnation of adult volunteering and some of the barriers to volunteering too. Um, and I think Morris Crowley spoke a lot about the benefits and also mentioned the cadets, which came up a couple of times. Presiding officer, um, these voluntary organizations, many of them long-standing institutions in our public life, deserve our thanks and our commendation. It is one of the duties uh, of us as parliamentarians to look at how we can support them with government where we can be a force to help enable uh, communities and individuals. And to those individuals, um, for all the work you do, for week in, week out, uh, volunteering in your own communities or wider, in every single part of Scotland, a very big thank you. Thank you very much. And I call on Angela Constance, Cabinet Secretary, till five o'clock, please. Thank you very much, President Officer. It's very clear that each and every one of us in this chamber today uh, recognises the value of volunteering. I want to start by uh, thanking uh, members today for their uh, contributions. I'll even thank uh, Brian Whittle, although I would like to issue him with a challenge uh, that perhaps he could uh, coach uh, Mr Halcrow Johnston for his very first uh, half uh, marathon. But I mean, importantly, importantly, um, listening to the, the, the contributions from uh, colleagues, I've learned uh, a lot about colleagues from across the chamber in terms of uh, their passions and interests, uh, even colleagues uh, that I have known for uh, many years. But I would like to take this uh, opportunity to reiterate my thanks uh, again to all of those volunteers who are giving uh, so much to so many, to all of those people across Scotland who are making absolutely vital contributions every day to their communities and to society as a whole, doing what they believe in without fanfare or reward because they share a belief uh, in a fairer society. Michelle Ballantyne and others spoke very personally about what volunteering meant to, to them uh, in their own lives and in their own uh, backgrounds. And I want to say to Michelle that you know, we recognise the full uh, scale of volunteering and that's why uh, for the first time 
this year we will put questions about informal volunteering uh, into the Scottish uh, household uh, surgery. And in essence, that's about capturing that uh, entire range uh, of social action. And it's that entire range of uh, social action that Claire Adamson uh, encapsulated um, so beautifully when she uh, very poignantly recognised that uh, many volunteers uh, don't actually consider themselves volunteers. They may be, you know, parents, grannies, carers, uh, sports enthusiasts who essentially uh, are just uh, getting onto it. But the other point she made is that we very often see the very best in volunteers and the very best of volunteering often at the, at the very worst of times and at a time when a community uh, can be in crisis. And that's why uh, investment and support of volunteers is absolutely crucial because it is that gold dust that builds resilience in communities and that enables communities to be stronger, to be cohesive in the bad times as well as the, the, the good. Monica Lennon spoke about the power of intergenerational work. That's something I'm very um, enthusiastic about. And I'll just say watch this space because it is a as a government, we're continuing to look uh, more closely uh, at the value of intergenerational work uh, and how that can be uh, brought to life. Uh, and it's also you know, a feature uh, of our uh, draft uh, social isolation uh, and loneliness strategy. And uh, Monica Lennon and her colleague uh, Ian Gray were, of course, uh, right to pay tribute to the work uh, of the late Joe Cox in reducing uh, social isolation and how that is work uh, that will continue uh, for uh, many years to come, no doubt. Elaine Smith made a very uh, important point that volunteers complement and do not replace uh, paid staff. I agree, I agree with her uh, fully on that. And Alison Johnston uh, spoke about uh, the, the gender divide in volunteers uh, within sport. And of course, the, the 2019 uh, Solheim Cup uh, will be an important uh, opportunity to uh, recruit uh, volunteers. Uh, my understanding is that that particular tournament is a, a biennial uh, golf tournament for professional uh, women golfers. So uh, I would have hoped that there would have been opportunities uh, in and around uh, that event to increase the number of uh, women volunteers in sport uh, in particular. It, of course, it feels absolutely right that we have the opportunity to debate and celebrate volunteering here in the Chamber. It is vital that volunteering stays high on the political agenda. And as many people uh, have reiterated, volunteering is not a nice to do. It is fundamental to creating a fairer, uh, more participative and more prosperous nation. Uh, and that has certainly been recognised here today. And I want to specifically mention uh, two points. One is about breaking down barriers. Many members asked about how we are going to break down those barriers uh, to uh, volunteering. And I would just want to give uh, one example, and that's an example that's contained in the Scottish Government's Disability Action Plan, which commits to uh, making funding available to enable more disabled people to, to volunteer. And the Volunteer and Support Fund is making uh, over £3 million available over the next three years to support more people into volunteering, including those uh, with a disability. And through our funding to Volunteer Scotland, um, there has been a partnership established uh, with Glasgow Disability Alliance. And that is very much uh, aimed at raising the participation uh, rates uh, for uh, disabled people. And Joanne Lamont spoke uh, again uh, very powerfully about how volunteering is doing more than helping. And she spoke about how volunteers and voluntary organisations uh, that have been created through uh, an understanding of need, uh, of where new policy and new practice has been developed actually uh, to transform communities and to uh, transform the country. And if I could uh, say to Joanne Lamont, our Fairer Scotland uh, Action Plan very much recognises the need to eradicate poverty in all its forms uh, and to prevent poverty in all its forms. And that also applies uh, to, 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 to food banks. 
because it's only at the end of last year that this Parliament united uh, around the need for a Child Poverty Act uh, to reintroduce uh, statutory income targets uh, that are at the very heart of our endeavours uh, to end child poverty uh, in this country. And in terms uh, of food poverty, which you spoke about, our commitment, as I said, is to end the need for food banks, but it's also uh, to create a community movement that is focused on food justice and not food charity. Joanne Lamott. Secretary, for that and recognise what she said. However, the point that's been made by the Glasgow South West Food Bank is that need is there now. And while we work on prevention, we have to meet that need too. And I would urge you, would you consider meeting with them to hear their direct concerns about how it's inhibiting their ability to volunteer with the way in which they're currently funded? Secretary. I'm absolutely more than happy to meet with uh, Ms Lamant and to outline the funding that we already provide for community food projects but also uh, to food banks and how we're taking forward uh, the, the, the actions around a piece of work that was done by volunteers and people who lead uh, the voluntary sector in challenging uh, food poverty in this country but I'm happy uh, to have a, a more fuller uh, discussion with the member uh, absolutely uh, happy uh, to do that the point has been made uh, presiding an officer uh, by a number of speakers on the importance of uh, consistency of support and consistency of funding I am pleased to to remind members that we have introduced three-year funding for things like the equality budget uh, for the volunteer support fund uh, and also um, you know, we have remained committed to uh, our third sector funding, which supports uh, third sector interfaces and also the commu Empowering Community Fund, which does so much to support uh, grassroots uh, organisations. In the time that I have left, uh, presiding officer, I just want to take uh, the opportunity to say thank you to everybody who serves in the cross-party group for volunteering. Uh, it's chaired by uh, Alex Cole Hamilton. And I do, uh, for one, really appreciate the contribution uh, that this cross-party working group is making to raise the profile of volunteering and how it's helping uh, to drive forward the agenda. Um, our partnership with the cross-party working group will be particularly important uh, as we move forward uh, with the outcomes framework uh, for volunteering, uh, which will indeed uh, be co-produced. And can I just um, end, presiding officer, by um, thanking members uh, for their contributions uh, here today. We've heard many great tributes to the fantastic work um, of our volunteers. We know that the biggest gift you can give anyone is that uh, of our time. I look forward to continuing to work uh, with members. And if I can just end by saying uh, once again, many, many thanks to the many thousands uh, of volunteers who are working very hard uh, to make Scotland a better place for today and tomorrow. Thank you very much. That concludes our debate on celebrating Scotland's volunteers. The next item of business is consideration of a legislative consent motion. And could I ask Hamza Youssef to move motion 12556 on parking code of practice bill UK legislation. Cheers. Oh. Moved. <laughs> there we are. There we are. Thank you. I thought you supposed to do this now. Thank you. There are two questions to be put as a result of today's business. The first question is that motion 12561 in the name of Angela Constance on celebrating Scotland's volunteers be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. And the next question is that motion 12566, sorry, 12556 on the Parking Code of Practice Bill UK legislation be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. And that concludes decision time. We'll move to members' business in the name of Daniel Johnson on the portrayal of ADHD treatment. And we'll just take a few moments before then to change for members to change seats. <laughs>